Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on Java native interface. And in the previous lectures, we discussed how to create a Maven project and work with GNI. And then we included a dynamic library for Windows and Mac. And then uh, uh, basically we made our jar artifact multi-platform. But uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the platform independent jar. And if you recall, right at the beginning of this series of lectures on Java native interface, I mentioned that as soon as we go to uh, JNI and C++, we gain a huge boost in performance, especially if we compile our C++ code in release mode, which is typically what we do for the final code. But then uh, we lose our platform independence that the Java gives us. And uh, the solution to regain back that independence is to basically create multiple dynamic libraries for any platform that we want to su uh, support. And if you recall, I mentioned that platform in this context means uh, the combination of CPU architecture and the operating system. Obviously, CPU architecture, we have to make sure that we are using the basically the CPU instruction set is correct, right? And also the operating system calls into the, uh, basically the hardware, how the operating system interacts with the hardware and the kind of native interface that the operating system provides for C++ is different on different platforms. So in order to make our uh, Java artifact, which is typically a jar uh, platform independent, we typically have two options. Option one is make separate jar files. Each jar contains a specific dynamic library. And for example, we create a jar file specific to Mac OS. We create a jar file specific to Windows, etc. And bundle each jar with only one dynamic library that is uh, targeted for that specific platform. However, this is not typically the best approach. So the option two is the most uh, used approach is make only one jar file and bundle the jar with all of the dynamic libraries for all the platforms, for all the uh, supported uh, platforms, for all the platforms that we want to support. And then at runtime, we check the CPU, the combination of CPU and OS, or basically we check the platform. Now at this point in time, uh, almost all CPUs or desktop uh, grade CPUs are uh, x64, AMD 64, 64-bit, which is a combination, which uh, platforms such as Mac OS support x86-64. Uh, so uh, Mac OS and Linux both support x86-64. So we can create one executable and it can run both uh, basic or one dynamic library and it can be supported on 32-bit Mac OS or 64-bit Mac OS or 32-bit Linux or 64-bit Linux. I think all the Mac OS versions at the moment and Linux are 64-bit by default and I think it's the same for Windows as well. However, in the previous lectures, when we discussed uh, how to set up our uh, GNI projects in Windows, we saw that uh, depending on the compiler that we choose to compile our C++ code in Windows, if we use MinGW, so maybe let me go back and have a look at our lectures on the uh, here. So we said that MinGW compiles to a 32-bit dynamic library, MinGW Windows 64 compiles to a 64-bit dynamic library and because the windows is 64-bit we have to install 64-bit jvm and 64-bit jvm doesn't allow to load 32-bit so you have to be sure that if you install 64-bit jvm jvm on a 64-bit windows you use the correct uh, mingw to create a 64-bit dynamic library but after we check that, uh, we set a condition, if condition, which we saw this in the previous lecture, that we check the platform and then load the appropriate dynamic library using native utils, which loads the dynamic library that is bundled inside the jar file. How to check the platform at runtime? So system.getProperties, this returns a hash map, and we looked at this at the, in the previous lectures. And then uh, get property os.name. This is the name of the OS, Mac, Windows, or Linux. Make sure you convert it this to lo lowercase so that uh, when you check for Mac, Win, or Linux, uh, it, it's, it, it's case sensitive and it usually returns the name, the, uh, uh, name of the OS uh, in, the, in the form that all the first letters are capitals. 
system.getPropertyOS.arc and we saw that this, this gives us the architecture of the operating system is it 32 bit or 64 bit and then system.getPropertyOS.version so if we don't want to support a specific version of the OS let's say we don't want to support Mac OS 10.9 or 10.10 .10 or whatever so we can check also for the version of the OS for example if I run this under Windows 10 it gives me Windows 10 the versions and here's a easy way to iterate through all the properties inside this system.get properties which is a hash map so when we say system.get properties it returns a properties object which extends the hash map and then uh, we use the basically the for each the, this is the internal iterator of the hash map for each and it takes a key value pair and then uh, consumes it so this is a consumer interface uh, so maybe it's uh, it's uh, it's good to write it here. So for each is the internal iterator of this hash map. Internal iterator and internal iterators basically take a consumer as their uh, argument, right? So we uh, we give it a, a key value pair and we ask it to consume it. And the way I'm consuming, usually we create some side effects. So this is, I'm just printing the key, K and the value on the, uh, basically on the screen, all right? So how to check the platform at runtime? We said that system get properties os.name, os.architecture. And if you look at the JDK in the system class, uh, and then in the get properties method there is a, a document that says that these are system properties the following properties are guaranteed to be defined so you can always rely on these following properties and for all JVMs uh, this is always defined java.version java version number java.vendor java vendor specific string uh, uh, basically java vendor URL java.home Java installation directory, java.class.version, Java class version number, java.class.path, Java class path. So you can print the class path to check which classes are included in the class path. OS.name, operating system name, OS.arc, operating system architecture, OS.version, operating system version, file.separator, file separator, forward slash on Unix, like Mac OS and Linux backward slash on windows path separator path separator this is a colon on unix and i think it's semicolon on windows this is basically the path environment variable all right so uh let's just uh, also write it here so path separator means the 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 separator that we use to separate different parts of the path environment variable so if we have multiple things uh, set on the path environment variable so this is the environment uh, basically the variable path environment variable this is the path environment variable line dot separator line separator backslash n on unix i think on windows it's a backslash n and a backslash r a carriage return user.name user account name user.home and user.dir users current working directory so you can always also check for the working directory so if i head to eclipse and if you recall in our maven project we currently we support uh, mac os and windows and obviously i want to also check uh, 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 linux so contains uh, uh, linux uh, L linux and then we want to load something that is specific for uh, Linux. So let's say uh, .so, right? On Linux, we create .so file. On Windows, we create .dll. On Mac, we create .dilib. And maybe we just need to check for .nux because it's, uh, it's a unique identifier. And then uh, let's also maybe in the main method, let's also look at the user.home, uh, user.directory. So uh, properties, 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 or P. I can just use P, uh, system.getPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesPropertiesProp
and then I can do a sysout p dot get uh, uh, basically user dot directory. Let's see if the current user dot directory dir. and uh, it says that it's maven native this is the project directory and we already know this because in eclipse ide when you look at the run configuration that you have for running your java project if you go to arguments you always see that uh, this is a working directory workspace location colon and then the project name so you can change it to any other thing that you want but based on this uh, basically this user directory is set, all right? Okay, so I want to uh, create this dot so on uh, Linux. So what I need to do, I need to export my uh, uh, Maven project and I'm going to put it in uh, desktop, some folder that I created Ubuntu shared, maven native c dot zip, all right? So I'm going to export this okay now i'm in uh, linux and then uh, this is my c++ project so i'm just going to open it and then extract it on desktop and uh, it's extracted these are the files header source and device so i'm going to go to my c++ project create a new c++ project i'm going to use the c++ managed build and I'm going to start with the hello world and let's call this again maven native C. Note that I'm not importing that project, I'm just creating a new one. I guess this is easier. And then let's just uh, compile in the release mode. And uh, all we have to do, so uh, let's build this to make sure that it works fine. It's uh, indexing and uh, once it's done, we should be able to uh, basically uh, build this. So let's build this. Build is done. Let's uh, try to run this. And it works. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to delete this uh, CPP file. And then also delete the release uh, folder. I'm going to clean it and I'm going to create a new source folder called header. Okay. And then what we need to do now is to go ahead and uh, copy our one file to the source folder here. And then the other one from the header. Copy, uh, paste. And now we have these two, obviously we have a problem with JNI header, so we have to uh, include these. So if I go to C++ build and then uh, uh, settings. And then we go to the include path of the C++ compiler on Linux. Uh, on the file system, the, uh, the, the JDK is in, in the user lib JVM JDK and then we have the include. So this is the JNI.edge and then the machine dependent on Linux is inside this Linux folder, right? So we include also this folder. So we add both the include of the JDK and include slash the platform. In this case, it's Linux. So apply and close. And then all this uh, goes away. And now we have to set our project to create a, a shared library, dynamic library. So executable shared and then so and we can have the lib at the beginning that's fine all right and then we just build this and the build is done the dynamic library is generated so i'm going to copy this and uh, paste it let's say in here uh, from the release let's see or maybe we just open this folder the release folder lib uh, lib maven underscore native underscore c dot so let's just paste it on the desktop okay and then what i'm going to do i'm going to copy it back to uh, my mac so from home 
desktop i'm going to copy to my desktop ubuntu shared and then this uh, native library all right so let's uh, close this and then uh, go back to uh, basically to mac os the uh, the eclipse and then go to folder desktop ubuntu shared I already have this SO from the Linux and I'm going to copy and paste it right at the top level of the resource folder. All right. Now we have the dynamic lib for Mac, lib maven native c.so for Linux and maven underscore native underscore c.dll. All right. So, uh, so we added a lib at the beginning. So this should still work fine. Yes. And I'm going to ask uh, uh, basically let's also remove this import I'm going to ask Maven to package this uh, project again this time uh, uh, the jar the dynamic library of the Linux is also included so I'm running the package command and the build was successful the jar is created in the target folder and if I go there and look at the jar now it's uh, basically uh, let's open this target folder again all right and then uh, we have this jar file i can unzip it and here we should see dot dilib dot so and dot dll so we are truly going uh, multi-platform and what i'm going to do i'm going to basically uh, take this uh, take this uh, jar file copy it to my uh, uh, ubuntu shared go go to folder ubuntu shared and then paste it here and i want to go back to linux and try to test this jar so machine file manager let's create a new session again and then uh, home and then desktop Ubuntu shared and then let's copy this uh, uh, jar over and then I'm going to copy it and then go to basically uh, Java perspe perspective and then I'm going to create a new Java project let's call it test underscore maven underscore native underscore C and finish and we don't want to create a module and then I'm going to create a folder new folder let's call this lib and then paste our jar here all right let's copy it again copy and then paste the jar here why is that it cannot copy it ah, properties copy and then paste selected element so can we drag and okay for some reason we cannot uh, let's go to desktop this jar file copy and then paste it okay now it's here and then i'm going to add it to my build path and you see inside the jar file we have uh, the three dynamic library so and dll so if i go inside maven native and test maven gen i uh, okay so hopefully i can be able i should be able to run it so run as java application and it works fine so we were able to create our maven project the artifact which is a jar file and then uh, made it multi-platform by checking for the for the uh, for the name of the operating system is it mac windows or linux and then uh, compiling our c++ project on uh, separately on each platform and bundling them into one single jar this is important we're just creating one artifact one jar which can support all the platforms that we want to support so i hope you enjoyed this lecture please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one